Hey everybody, it's Charlie Craven, and today I'm going to tie for you a fly that we call the Jeffrey Dauber. Um, and it's a uh, mud dauber imitation, which is, uh, uh, you know, a bug that John Barr and I used to make fun of back in the day about uh, guys from the East tying mud dauber patterns. And uh, um, through pure coincidence and happenstance, I happen to have come up with one, and, and the dang thing does work. Um, uh, mud daubers and yellow jackets, there's a, another pattern that goes along with this one called the Lucky Bee. Um, they're both tied the same way, just in different colors. Uh, but those sort of uh, additional terrestrials to your box um, is where the idea for these flies came from. And uh, um, as I as I have fished this fly more and more, uh, it's amazing how uh, how prevalent these bugs are on the water, uh, especially when you start paying attention and uh, how uh, how eagerly the fish eat them. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to tie this Jeffrey Dauber. Um, and uh, the funny story about the name on this one, this was named by my friend Danny Lane, who's a guide on uh, the Snake and the Teton in Henry's Fork in Idaho. And uh, the first day that we fished this fly, I had just had prototypes of it. And we were uh, catching fish, and, and my uh, my wife had to be on, and I, I put on the uh, the black version. And, uh, and we were catching fish, and at one point during the day, I snagged my fly up in the bushes on the bank, and... Uh, we pulled the fly, or pulled the pulled the boat over, and I was untangling the fly from the from the bushes. And um, sure enough, in those bushes were a bunch of real mud daubers flying around. Um, and I said this to uh, to Danny, and I was like, "Yeah, see, I, I I told you these things are around. These fish, you know, these fish eat these things." And he was like, "You know what? We're going to call that fly. We're going to call that the Jeffrey Dauber." And that is exactly the best name that I can imagine for a fly like this. So uh, kind of fun. There's always a good story to go along with that stuff, but. Uh, uh, what we're going to do to get started is I've just got a regular sewing needle in my vise. I've got the pointy end out here. And I'm going to take um, some 14-knot black vivas. And I'm going to create a jam knot toward the toward the end of the, the pointy end of the needle. But I'm going to leave a long tag end here. I want to make sure I leave that hanging out. And then I'm going to take a strip of foam. No, I'm not. I'm going to take a uh, piece of yarn. Um, and what I've got here, this is some McFly lawn. Um, it doesn't have to be McFly on this is yellow because it's what it, what was in my bag. Um, it's not going to uh, not going to show. It's not going to make a difference. Um, but I've got about a half a strand here, and what I'll do is I'm going to tie this down on top of that jam knot, and then I'm going to wrap back over it about nine or ten millimeters, so about a centimeter long, like so. Um, and then I'll trim the front end short, and I'll leave the back end long for now. I'm going to come back forward again. And now I'll take that piece of foam, and what I want is a thin strip. Yeah, this one's a good one. Thin strip of foam, like so. So this is about three millimeters wide by about one millimeter thick. Um, and you can see you just want to kind of cut a slice off the edge of the sheet of three millimeter foam. And what I'll do here is I'm going to tie this in right at the front of our thread base, and then I'll wrap back over it just kind of with open spirals. I want to make sure I get all the way to the end back here, and then I'll cross hatch forward over it. So we're just anchoring that down. And then I'll take a piece of 0x tippet material, um, and I only need a couple inches here. But what I'll do is I'm going to lay this in at the front edge and catch it, and wrap over it about halfway up, and then I'll come forward a bit and fold that other end forward and catch it again and come all the way forward. And I'll leave my thread hanging at the front end. Once I've got my thread up to that front end, I'm going to come in with a bit of super glue. And I want to put a coat, and I want to get all the way around um, this extended body portion. And right up to, to either end. But I don't want to go too heavy. And typically, squeezing straight from the bottle like that, um, I'll get it on there too heavy, and I'll use just a scrap of foam here to kind of smear that around and pick up any extra and I'll set that aside because I'll probably need it again here in a minute. So now I'm going to take this piece of foam and I'm going to start to wrap it um, back here at the bend. I want to go fairly tightly. Um, I said bend, it's the back of the needle. Fairly tightly and you can see I'm overlapping the turns. And as I get toward the front you'll see um, you can kind of see on the bottom right here, I try not to stick my finger into it, um, a little extra gob of, of glue there that kind of works its way out. 
I'll use that scrap of foam to wipe that off before I get right up to the end. And then I'll tie that foam off, sort of back on top of itself, get a couple, three turns on it, and then stretch that foam and trim it off. And that's going to form our extended body. Uh, so what I'll do here now is I'll come in and whip finish up over the top, right up on the front edge of that body. You can see that maintains that sort of square shoulder that we're after. And then I'll trim my thread out. Now I don't want to wait too long to do this, but what I'll do is I'm going to pull that off of the needle, and that piece of yarn helps dramatically with that. And what I want to do with this tag end now is I'm going to pull on that, and that'll pull the slack out of the, the jam knot. Um, you saw that extra slack come out, and I'll trim that thread off. And then what I'll usually do is sort of fold that yarn over tight and trim it off as flush as I can get it. Uh, we'll leave a little yellow hot spot on the end there, which is not altogether unattractive. Now one thing I'll do is I'll take that body now, um, and typically I'll make these bodies all at once. I'll do a bunch of them in a row, but I'll take it and kind of give it a, a bend. And it'll kind of take that set, so it's got a bit of a curve to the body like so. And I'll just set that aside and continue on making a bunch of abdomens. Get that last little tag out of there. Making a bunch of abdomens, and then I'll come back and, and uh, finish the rest of the fly. So I'm going to now take that needle out of the vise. Get you set up here. There we go. That's a little better. And I'm going to put a 2487 size 16 in my vise. Um, you can tie these on 14s or 16s. Um, doesn't seem to make a huge overall difference in the size of the of the finished fly. Um, but that's where we're going to start. And I'm going to take that same 14 knot black thread, and start it up here just behind the hook eye. And I want to work back to just about the hook point or so, maybe just between the barb and the point. Put that thread base down. So now I'll pick up my extended body. I'm not sure if this is the same one. This is not the same one. Here's the same one that we just did. Um, and it's got two pieces of mono sticking out of the end of it. What I want to do is cut uh, one of those off. It doesn't really matter which one. If there's one that's straighter than the other, I'll usually cut that one off. Um, and now what I'll do is I'm going to attach this to the hook, uh, leaving an obvious gap. Let me get a few turns on there. Obvious gap between the, the hook and the extended portion. Um, and what I'll do there is I'll wrap over that mono most of the way up, and I'll back my thread up a bit and catch this again to fold that mono over. Um, the, the takeaway right there is if I leave my thread hanging up here right where I'm going to fold it, um, your thread wants to slide off that piece. So if I back that thread up a bit, um, I can get a little, little bit better angle on it to get it anchored. Um, and I'll anchor that in place over that fold and then trim that mono out and just wrap back over it. So we've got our extended body, and you can see the, the waist, the space in between. Um, I'm going to say that's about a half a uh, half a gap, maybe two-thirds of a hook gap. Um, on a mud dauber, the, a real mud dauber actually has a little bit bigger segment between its abdomen and its thorax than a, than a yellow jacket does. So if you really want to be accurate, you can make that a little bit longer even. Um, what I'll do now is I'm going to take a strand of small sexy legs in amber color. Um, and these are barred sexy legs. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to tie it in at the center of its length. And I'll pull one half back to the far side of the hook and wrap back over it, uh, right back to the base of that body. And then I'll pull the other half down on my near side and anchor it in place. And I want those, so I want those legs kind of hanging back and down. You can sort of maneuver them with the thread a little bit. And even just by pulling on them, like so. So we've got those legs dangling back. It's already starting to look like a creepy bug, isn't it? Um, and now I'm going to take another piece of foam. Now this, fo this piece of foam I want to be a little thicker than the first piece. Um, this is probably going to be two by three millimeters. About like so. So slightly thicker than what we had to start with. And I'm going to tie this down just behind the eye here. 
uh, before I get too far, I'm going to put just a little shot of glue on there. Um, anything that you uh, tie with foam is going to be improved with just very small amounts of super glue. So I want to put a little coat of super glue on that hook shank before I tie that down. And then I'll come back in and actually do what I said I was going to do. I'm going to tie this piece of foam down right on top of that glue. And I want to wrap back over right up to the base of the legs. Like so. So now I'm going to take some black superfine dubbing. And I want to dub a very tight strand here. Um, and you don't need very much. What I'm going to do is just build a ball. So I'm going to build a tight strand of black superfine. And this will also help to sort of soak up any extra glue you've got back there. But right back here at the, at the bend of the hook. So I'll tie that down. We've just built that little ball. And then I'm going to come in. And for my wings, I've got some polypropylene macrame yarn. Again, this is a material I've been using tons of. Um, I find a home for it on, on everything because it floats so well. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a fairly thin strand. Um, ultimately, this strand is going to be be doubled. Um, so I don't want too much. And what I've got here uh, for these wings is gold and rust and gray and black. Um, so you can see there's some, some mixed color strands in there. And what I want to do is I'm going to take this strand. I've got a long strand here that I've that I've blended up. I'm going to take this strand and I'm going to furl the end. So what I mean by that is I'm going to rotate either end a different direction until it twists up into a cord. And then I'll let it buckle in the middle like so. And then I'm going to take that and roll that in my fingertips until I can kind of crease the end of it. Um, I don't want it corded into a tight, tight rope. I don't want to reduce the surface area. Um, I'm just using that furl to kind of bundle it together like so. And I'm going to take this first wing and I'll tie it in here. Um, it's about oh, two-thirds of the length of the body. I'm going to take my first wing and lay it across the hook at an angle and catch it with a few turns of thread. And then I'll take that same clump of yarn just to make sure that I have the same amount of material in both wings. And I'll furl the next wing and roll it up the same way. Like so. Measure that length about the same. And I'll tie that one down. And you can see I'm staying in a narrow little band of thread there. So we've got our two wings on, on top of the hook. And I'll lift my butt ends up and trim those out nice and close. Now we're going to come in and put our legs in. And so for the legs, we're going to use another strand of that same um, amber-colored sexy floss. And I want... I'm waiting for the train. We'll edit this out. For the legs, I'm going to take another strand of that same amber-colored sexy floss. And I'm going to take one piece and tie it in here on my near side, right at the center of its length. Just catch it with a couple turns. And this is just below the wing. And I'll take another piece and put that in on the far side and catch it in the same spot. Same method. We're just kind of making an X of those legs there. You can kind of see where we're, where we're getting. And then I'll come in and apply just another very th thin layer of Superfine. I'm going to twist this on as tightly as I can get it and as thin as I can get it. Because we've got a bit of thread work to do here. And before I start to wrap that dubbing, I'll put another just little tiny shot of glue right on top of the base of that wing. I'll even let it bleed up into the base of the wing a little bit. That'll help to separate the wings when we're all said and done. So now I'm going to take my thread, my dub thread, I'm going to start wrapping between the legs, and I'll pull the legs back and X between them. And in that process, I'm covering those butt ends. Um, you can see how I can kind of maneuver where those legs sit. And I want to end up 
with bare thread up here behind the hook eye, like so. So now I'm going to take this piece of foam and I'm going to pull it over the top. And I don't really want to stretch it here. I'm going to pull it up over the top, drop it over just behind the hook eye, and cinch it down. Um, and you do want to be careful here that you, if you cinch too tightly, you can cut through that piece of foam. Um, I recently did that in a demo with an audience, so that was, that was super cool. Um, so don't pull too hard right there. And now for the head, what I'll do is I'm going to take this remaining piece of foam and fold it back into just a short little nub, and I'll catch it again right in that same spot, like so. Now I'm going to whip finish, and one thing I found is don't pull too tight on that thread while you're trying to feed your thread for the, for the whip finish, but I'm going to whip finish right through that same segment. Two, three, four turns there. I'll pull that down tight. Trim my thread out. And then I'll take this piece of foam on top and pull it taut and trim it off. That way it cleans, cleans up flush. And now on this fly, this one's done. The bee's got a, a little coloring, a little, little marker work to, to do on it to make him cool, but um, this one is pretty much done. I'm going to trim these back legs um, longer than the end of the body. Their, their back legs are fairly long, so I'm going to leave those fairly long. And then the front legs I'm going to trim Oh, I'm going to say about the length of the thorax is about where these come out. You can sort of eyeball it. Um, and while that glue is still wet, I sort of prop those wings up. I, want, I do want them to stick upright, like so. Just makes the fly easier to see on the water. Um, this wing here is maybe a little more twisted than I'd like it to be. One thing you can do to that is sort of take it and separate those fibers a bit. There we go. That's a little more like it. Just gives us a bit more surface area. I'm going to lower him down just a bit here. And I'll give you a, a 360 view of the, of the Jeffrey Dauber. Um, that's a pretty creepy little bug. Um, and one of the, like I say, one of the coolest things about this fly um, is it's an extraterrestrial. You know, we all fish beetles and ants and hoppers and things like that through the summer months. And, and I just wanted something that, uh, um, you know, if somebody else was fishing in front of me or another boat was throwing something different, I had a different fly to show them. Um, and it has astonished me how well the fish have eaten this fly, and uh, both this and the, the yellow jacket, how they react to it. Uh, they seem to know exactly what it is. They eat it with 100% confidence. Um, and it's got, this fly is actually pretty realistic. I mean, there you've got the, the kind of top view. I'll get you a little better focus on that, but um, very realistic um, and not a hard fly to tie. Um, you know, I usually fish this just as a single dry and just put it where it needs to be. Um, you know, if you see fish rising, by all means, uh, you know, throw it to them. Um, but if you don't see fish rising, just covering the water and kind of putting it where you think there might be a fish. Um, it has astonished me, even on some pressured waters. You know, the South Platte here, right at Decker's last fall. Uh, my son and I fished down there. Char and I fished down there. And, and uh, I threw the, the bee and the, and the dauber and uh, uh, caught a surprising amount of fish on, uh, on a fly that... Uh, Nobody seems to know about. So um, that's the Jeffrey Dauber. It's a killer. Yeah, see what I did there? Thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven.